as you know, our uh, catechetical uh, system of preaching now has moved uh, during the time of Lent to address the person of Jesus, right, the Son of God. And the readings this weekend have uh, a very long, let's say, uh, backstory, which is that all during the Old Testament, we hear uh, the Israelites clamoring for uh, the gift of being able and wanting to see the face of God, right? Uh, and I, I knew that it was in there a lot, but uh, an address that uh, Pope Benedict gave, he said that it's more than a hundred times where uh, the people in the Old Testament say that they want to see the face of God. But there's kind of a, a dilemma in that they also know that uh, anyone who sees the face of God will not live, right? So it's an aspiration for something, right, so great, to see God face to face as he is, uh, but it's not something for this life because uh, right, we are not prepared to see God face to face as he is. Only in heaven will that be possible for us. And so that aspiration went unfulfilled in, in the Old Testament, right? There were times when God would give you know, certain kinds of glimpses of his glory, but never was anyone really allowed to see him face to face. Even when we see that Moses spoke to him seemingly face to face, it was always, there was always some kind of intermediary. Uh, but then Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, took our human nature, right? He became one of us so that we could see him, right? And so to see Jesus, you could see the face of God. He's truly God. Uh, recall when the, the apostle said to him, uh, right, just show us the Father. And Jesus says, hey, uh, Philip, do you not believe that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Right, the whole Trinity is, uh, is present. Jesus Christ is, uh, is God in the flesh. So that aspiration went unfulfilled until the time of Christ. So Jesus comes among us, right? God sends his only son, uh, and as Jesus says, he came into this world to reveal to us the Father, right? To teach us about the Father uh, and, and to be, uh, as his name implies, right? God is with us, Emmanuel. But see what the human race's reaction to that was, right? Uh, once God showed us his face uh, in our rebellion against God, right? Jesus was crucified. Right? And so uh, the scriptures tell us that in the crucifixion and in our Lord's passion and death, his face was so marred beyond recognition that he could not be recognized as a man. That's what we did when God showed us his face. Right? In the transfiguration, though, God transfigured the face of Jesus. He glorified him. He showed us a glimpse of his glory. The apostles saw it. Right? They saw uh, a, his face became dazzling, right? more so than the sun. They saw that glimpse of his glory for just a moment. So right, uh, God the Father transfigured the face of Jesus. We disfigured the face of Jesus with our sins. Right? You and I are, are not the ones who, who struck Jesus, but our sins are the cause of that, right? the reason for our Lord being struck, right, was to suffer for our sins. And so you and I uh, are party to that, right, to that disfiguration of the face of Christ. So in, the, in our redemption, we know that what Jesus comes to do is to restore the image of God in us that was disfigured at the fall, right? In the fall, the image and likeness of God that we were made in was disfigured by sin, right? And so Jesus comes to reflect that, right? He shows us the face of, of humanity uh, in its, in its uh, fallen state, right? What we, uh, what we look like. We are disfigured by sin. And then we see that God the Father glorified Jesus, showed us a glimpse of his glory, right? Transfigured. And that's to give us hope, right, in two regards. First, for the, for the apostles who were about to go and see Jesus crucified before them. They needed to be strengthened by that uh, vision of Christ in his glory, right, so they wouldn't be scandalized and lose hope in the face of his crucifixion. 
But for you and I, right, uh, to that glimpse of glory that was shown to us gives us hope to know that we will be uh, resurrected and glorified with Jesus Christ. That's the promise Jesus made to us, right? That we would share in his glory in heaven, right? We will have resurrected and glorified bodies uh, and we will share in his glory. So that's to give us hope. Right, so that we won't despair because of uh, our sin and be because of the fall of the human race, but we will hope in Jesus Christ. Right? I often, uh, not often, every time <laughs> I read this uh, gospel passage, I like to relate the transfiguration to uh, part of the liturgy that we celebrate, which is uh, when we celebrate solemn exposition and benediction of our Lord. And what we do in, uh, in that liturgy is we go up uh, first to a high place. And do you know that uh, at the top of our tabernacle, uh, there's a crown there that comes off and around it are four angels. But that flat place on the top with the four angels is called the tabor just like Mount Tabor, where Jesus was transfigured. And so we go up to the high place. I even have to use a step to reach it. I can't reach it uh, from, the, from the wooden step there. I have to put a little extra step to reach it. It's a high place, or I'm short. I don't know which. Nevertheless, uh, right, the Eucharist is placed, the, the host is placed in a monstrance, right? the golden implement that has rays coming from it. Uh, it's called a monstrance. That word means to demonstrate, right? Demonstrates the glory of Jesus Christ hidden. He hides himself, right? His humility hides himself in the Eucharist. We demonstrate it through the liturgy, right? So the, the monstrance has rays coming forth like the rays of light uh, that shone in our Lord's face. And then we light the, the candles around it, at least six, sometimes more, uh, to demonstrate, right, that dazzling light that came uh, forth from Christ when he was uh, transfigured on Mount Tabor. And then uh, right, we offer incense to Jesus because he's God. And there we see uh, also uh, a re reminder of the cloud right, that was at, there at Mount Tabor that enveloped the apostles, right? It represents the Holy Spirit. From the cloud, right, God the Father said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And so when we have times of, of exposition, right, it's important for us to have uh, silent times of prayer, to be in the presence of Jesus as uh, the apostles were on Mount Tabor. We have, uh, you know, exposition here every Thursday evening, uh, but just down the street, uh, right, the, the Sisters of Our Lady of Guadalupe have 24-7, uh, right, perpetual adoration there. You can go and spend time adoring our Lord, exposed, just as the apostles were given the chance for that long, right, to see him in his glory uh, on Mount Tabor. You can go there any time you want, spend as much time as you want, adoring our Lord. Peter said, it is good that we are here. We should be there, right? We should be before him, adoring him, uh, anticipating and longing uh, to see his face, yes, but to see his glory and to share in his glory. Right? That's what we're invited to as, uh, as followers of our Lord, as members of his body. Right? The reason we will be resurrected and glorified is because we are members of his resurrected and glorified body. So uh, at, the, at the conclusion of benediction, it's a very solemn and beautiful moment because uh, ordinarily, when a blessing is given by a priest or a deacon, right, we impose a blessing like this, right? Um, others uh, invoke a blessing, right, by calling a blessing themselves, but we impose a blessing. And we do that because we're acting in the person of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, and so you might think of it uh, as Jesus reaching through the priest, right, and, and giving you a blessing. But at benediction, we do something different, right? We cover ourselves with a humeral veil, it covers our hands, right? Uh, so that you know that the blessing isn't coming uh, through the priest or from the priest or the deacon, it's coming from Jesus himself, right? We take the monstrance and give you a blessing. So Jesus himself is blessing you with no intermediary, right? Uh, 
that blessing comes from our Lord himself. That's why it's such a beautiful, powerful, solemn moment uh, to receive that blessing uh, at solemn benediction, right? The solemn blessing that comes from Jesus himself. So I would encourage you uh, sometime during Lent, right, to, to make the effort to come either on a Thursday here or at any time uh, at the, the Adoration Chapel uh, there on, uh, on Porco, between Strong and Porco there. Uh, anytime, right? The sisters are open 24-7. Go there and be in the presence of Jesus. It is good for us to be there.